crisscross applesauce. That's the way we like to sit. Now, if you'd listen for a little bit, I'm going to talk to the man who knows about 8-bit, 16-bit, polygons, and more, but not polygon, Kotaku. I'm Frank Cowley of Neighborhood Game Club, wow. and this is Jason Schreier. That I do, was fantastic. I, do li- I like to do spoken word poetry. Oh, man. Uh, we're at E3. You should have a show. You oh. should have a one-man show. There you go. I'm, I do, normally, this uh, podcast is two people, but I'm going to do one man from now on spoken word. That's coming next week. Please. Anyways, we're here at E3 2017. It's open to the public. So, Jason, you're actually... That's this, how I got it. Yeah, that's how you got it in your first yeah. year. Uh, would yeah. you like to introduce yourself? My name is Jason Schreier. I am a big fan of video games. I especially love Super Mario, and I'm so happy to be here at E3 for the first time ever. I, I just I just want to go up and hug Reggie and Miyamoto and all of my favorite developers. I'm just so excited. Awesome gamer. Yeah, I was at E3 2017. Uh, in all seri- I just realized that my badge was showing. Oh, Uh-oh. yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, in all serious, Jason is a fantastic journalist. You write for Kotaku. Thank you. Thank you very much. How long have you been with Kotaku? I have been with Kotaku for six years. Oh, my gosh. Which is, in internet years, that's like 40 how did you work your way up to Kotaku? Did you go to school for journalism? Were I went you- to school. I, I went to school for. I, so I went to NYU's Gallatin, which is individualized study, which means that I can bullshit my way through any major <laughs> I want. Awesome. Um, and then uh, I was doing a lot of like newspaper stuff back then and journalism stuff. And then after I graduated, I started freelancing. Got a job at Wired, writing for oh, video awesome. games under Chris Kohler, who now hilariously works in the at Kotaku. And then uh, Stephen Tatella reached out while I was there a couple years after I started Wired, and he was like, "Hey, come join Kotaku." And I was like, "Okay." He got me drunk and got me to agree to it and it's just the story goes from there so that was like 2012 that I started there fun times awesome so for me as a kid like I subscribed to EGM and you know like all these magazines and I thought the idea of like oh what is a magazine I know right you can get paid to write about video games like that seemed like the dream job and then I went to high school and I hated reading whatever Um, as a kid did you like read magazines? How did you kind of fuse the two interests? Vaguely. I I was never really interested in magazines. I mean, like, I had Nintendo Power growing up when I was really little, but I was more interested in just, like, writing for a living. Like, I knew I always wanted to be a writer. And then in high school, I joined the newspaper, and I actually, I worked my way up to editor-in-chief, and then I got kicked off the high school newspaper because I wrote a live journal and included a a picture of one of the teachers who I thought was funny-looking, and the principal called me into his office one day and it was like and he had printed out pictures from my live journal and was like listen you're kicked off the newspaper I was like what the fuck oh and gosh. it almost traumatized me it almost stopped me from like going into journalism entirely so uh, uh, I'm glad that I decided to do it anyway but yeah I was always interested in writing and, uh, now when you were writing for your school paper did you ever give like a school play like a 7 out of 10 and have I advertisers threaten you yeah no I should have if I, if I really hated it it would be a 7 out of 10 otherwise <laughs> that's, it, the, it whole, that's the only way game time. journalism works with reviews <laughs> um, so that's fascinating do you have it? This is like a quick question, but do you have any advice for even people like me who do YouTube kind of as a hobby? How do you really break into video game journalism? Not like necessarily Twitch streaming, broadcasting, that's still a relevant thing, but like I feel like what you do is on a whole nother level. Like you do real journalism, you talk about games seriously, and it's approachable. How do you kind of break in today? Man, I don't even know. People always ask me that, and I'm just like, even five years ago, the landscape was so different than it is now. Um, I think the most important thing is to specialize. So, like, if you want to be the YouTuber who screams, about things on camera then go and be the best YouTuber who screams about things on camera or if you want like uh, more seriously if you want to be like really into esports then I would recommend specializing and saying hey I'm going to be the esports journalist and the best guy or girl who is doing esports stuff or like specialty like that that's kind of the best advice if you want to be writing then read a lot write a lot get really good at it if you want to do video stuff then shoot yourself like with your iphone camera and be like hey guys everyone like and subscribe and then bam great. awesome yeah find your niche and go for it that's cool so i feel like with your thing anytime you come out with an article that's like boom here's the story on destiny here's the story on mass effect i feel like you're one of the few people who do really great investigative journalism what is your whole process for that like I, you also did you broke the gamestop story like how do you even approach something like that um well it always starts off with a question right like the best story is always start off with a question like what why was Destiny's story so crappy when it came out why what happened to Mass Effect Andromeda and I think often when the question is interesting and it uh, it's answering it would tell an interesting story I try to dig into that and I will just reach out to as many people as possible try to find the story and there's some stuff that I can't really talk about but yeah I mean it's it's a long process it takes a lot of commitment it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of working nights and weekends once in a while Um, it takes a lot of refusing to 
take no for an answer, yeah. which I think some people are bad at, but fortunately I'm an asshole, so I'm okay <laughs> with just going up to people and bugging them over and over again until they say yes to me. Um, yeah, persistence, I think, is, is a big trait that you really need in order to do journalism, just being willing to bug people over and over again until they give you the answers that you want, which, uh, which I think is... is tougher to do than most things. Awesome. Um, I have a quick question. You might know this very well. I, I, might, I majored in film, so I know all about like Hollywood and their industry, and mm -hmm. I feel like they're, they're so different, whereas Hollywood, like as soon as something goes into development, it's all everywhere. Like You know about like screenplays as they're being written. Uh -huh. Video games don't get announced a lot of the time until yep. five months until they come out. Yep. Do you know why is the video game industry so secretive? Like, do you, Is there a reason for that? Uh, there are reasons for that. I mean, it's kind of inexplicable to yeah. me. Uh, like when Bethesda is working on Fallout 4, and they refuse to acknowledge <laughs> that Fallout 4 is happening. It makes no sense to me. Um, there are reasons. I think in games more than film, things change very, very often, mm -hmm. and developers are hesitant to show what they're working on. And the production time so is so much longer. It's so much longer and so much more fraught with uh, uh, potential obstacles and things oh, yeah. that could go wrong because of the technology. And uh, I talk about this a lot in my book, which I will plug. Um, it's uh, a, a totally different beast, and I think developers are just afraid to show something that might not actually make it in the game, or talk about something that might not actually come out. So because because the internet yeah. like explodes when that happens, as we saw with No Man's Sky, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's actually that's which the I'm best still, reason. Yeah, I'm to... still waiting on that multiplayer uh, <laughs> that, that was supposed to be in there, but yeah, no, I think that's one of the biggest reason that that secrecy is there. Um, another part of it is just like trade secrets and people not wanting to talk about things in case like for example like this year we suddenly have like two different pirate games that both look the same yeah that's crazy. and then Ubisoft thing and uh, I imagine that that like people don't want to other companies to know what they're working on so that's part of it um, yeah a lot of other factors that's really cool so good good segue I'm interested to learn about your you I feel like how many years did it take you to write your game book um, so I started uh, everything in September of 2015, because actually, so I published, or October of 2015, because I published that story about Destiny, about what happened to that, and from there, it kind of led to me talking to my now agent about, like, potential books, and we shopped around an outline, we got a publisher, HarperCollins, to take it in about February of 2016, so really, I've been working on it since then, but the actual writing, a lot of that was just reporting, because I couldn't write anything oh, right, right. until I went out and invested. The way it's structured is that each chapter there are 10 chapters and each one is about a different game oh, that's a behind awesome. the scenes story of a different game so I had to go out and do the reporting for Stan because it's all based on just interviews that I had with developers so I couldn't start writing until the bulk of it I wrote between October of last year and February of this year so like three or four months which was my fiance did not see a lot of me <laughs> <laughs> over those three or four months. It was a lot of work. It was just because I was still working at Kotaku. Oh my time, gosh, so yeah. Nights and weekends. <laughs> um, to contextualize it, your book is Blood, Sweat, and Pixels? Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. It uh, is very cheap. You can pre-order it now at your local uh, uh, book retailer. And the I promise that if you pre-order it, it will not ship broken. Uh, you will not have to patch it with, uh, with, with improvements that will just make it better a month later. I promise that uh, it, it, it will not ship with like the spine torn off and like the pages all glued together. I promise. I promise. And uh, it what's the release date? Uh, September 5th. It comes out a day before Destiny 2. So if you're a Destiny fan, you can play it while... The, you're waiting for your ship to go to orbit. So I know you're, you're covering, I know some games are covering, what's like one game that you can tease for us that like, after reporting of it, completely change your perception of it? What has like, oh, you don't have to give the spoil, but like what has some of the juiciest details that, that people, you think people are gonna really respond man, to? Man, there are a lot of good ones. I think the Uncharted 4 story is oh, something yeah. that a lot of people have been wondering, like what really happened between Amy Henning leaving and Neil Druckmann and Bruce Staley taking over. That's a really good story. Um, I really like the Stardew Valley story, which is kind of an indie game that not a lot of, uh, I mean, it was pretty successful, but not a lot of people know that it was just made by one person sitting alone in his apartment for five years. So that story is pretty cool. There's also Destiny's in there. The Witcher 3 is in there. Um, the Star Wars 1313 story is in there, which oh, I think awesome. uh, not a lot of people know about like why it was canceled, how it kind of fell apart, how the studio fell apart towards the end of things, and the last minute salvage mission to save it. Uh, not a lot of people know about that, so that's in there. You can check out the book if you want to learn that story. I will not reveal it. Yeah, there. no, I'm stoked. Um, something. My other favorite video game book is Masters of Doom. Yes. I loved that Great story. 
story. Um, other than that, are there any other game books or just like are there any other video game literature that you really like? Yeah, I liked uh, Extra Lives by Tom Bissell. That's a great a book. That's a really good one. Um, Tom Bissell, who I'm about to meet over there for dinner. Um, oh my gosh! So I'm plugging. I guess I'm plugging my friend's book. Which, oh full gosh. disclosure, Tom is my friend. Um, yeah, Masters of Doom, I really enjoyed. Although my book actually takes a little bit of a different approach because Masters of Doom, it kind of set the scene and recreated all of what happened. So like the dialogue, he just got you know, recreated based on his reporting and recreated the scenes. Mine is more of like a reported feature. So like if you read the Kotaku story on Mass Effect, it's a lot like that in that I quote people directly rather than just like making up what they said or like trying to remember yeah, what yeah, they yeah. said. Um, so uh, uh, don't expect this book to be exactly <laughs> like Masters of Doom. Awesome. No, I'm stoked. And then other uh, other than journalism, are there any favorite authors you really like? Fiction, nonfiction, just any books in general? I'm a big reader, so I'm just curious. Yeah, um, I am. I'm trying to think about. It. I just read The Lost City of Z, which is oh, really I've heard that's book. good. Really, really entertaining, really enthralling story. Um, I like Stephen King a lot. Yes. Like, hey, real fast. Have you read The Stand? I have. I I'm I'm reading. I'm halfway through The Stand right now. It's phenomenal. Uh, if you like The Last of Us. Read The Stand. If you like Walking Dead, The Stand came out in the 70s. It is about an influenza outbreak, a secret government, you know, virus. It's from the very dawn of the outbreak through the whole infection as it spreads and people start dying. And then as civilizations rebuild and come to war each other, it is incredible. It's pretty long, but... Man, it's shaping up to be a good one. Any yeah, other favorite and that kings? Whole, man, that whole section where he describes like how it spread, how individual it moved from people dying. Oh my god, so good, man. Stephen King is the best. Um, I'm a big uh, Game of Thrones fan. The books. Um, what else? Uh, I like Neil Gaiman. Um, what else am I? Right? So, last today, I, I have the Gunslinger sitting on my nightstand. That's yes, my next Dark Tower is sick. Um, and yeah, lots of. I have a giant pile of books that I am slowly getting through. Um, I'm trying to think of other fiction that I've read recently. I, I'm, I've been writing on the, like yeah. this book. Finishing up this book has kind of drained my time for reading, so I'm hoping to get more now that the, the book is totally yeah. done. Well, it's a huge honor to speak to an author. Last question. What's yes. really, what's really What's been your favorite games at E3 so far? Super Mario Odyssey yeah. is well, the, <laughs> the greatest thing here <laughs> by far. Um, that game... I feel like that game is going to be to Mario what Breath of the Wild is to Zelda, and man, I'm very excited. I'm uh, I'm excited for Nino Kuni 2 just because oh, yeah. that's my one of my favorite PS3 games, and you're a big JRPG nut. I am, yeah, Nino Kuni 2. I'm playing that tomorrow, so I can't talk about it yet. Um, but I am excited to get my hands on it. Uh, I saw I just passed the Atlas corner, and they have like Radiant Historia, Etrian Odyssey 5. I'm just like, oh, that's my my corner, <laughs> my corner of E3. What's the official JRPG count? It's pathetic. It's man, yeah, the press conferences it was like one i think xenoblade 2 and nintendo but the other Man, conferences pirate one. game pirate count one there's pirate two pirate count games two. pirate count yeah pirate count two jrpg count one that is pathetic you can't have more pirate <laughs> games than jrpgs it makes me sony was the one that really just like underwhelmed did mm. not deliver all of their games really other than like the shadow hey, of is saying everybody's golf i love hot shots golf That's i'm fair. excited for that 40 bucks budget title yeah that wasn't Good. even at their press conference though. yeah it was, it was like the pre-show, pre-show. that's up with that count um, I, I feel like Sony's games were all just games they announced last year. Yeah. And we're like, oh, yeah, all these. Are, it's coming <laughs> we soon. We still yeah. have these, yeah. Cool. All right, and you want to plug your sites, your Twitter, your podcast? Check out Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. It is very cheap. It is like 10 bucks. You can go buy it on your favorite book retailer. Um, it is coming September 5th from HarperCollins. You can also find me on Twitter at Jason Schreier, um, Kotaku.com. We got lots of E3 coverage. And my podcast, Kotaku Split Screen, with Kirk Hamilton, where we talk about the weather and maybe video games every once in a while. Awesome. Thank you so much. Check Thank out Blood, you, Sweat, Fred. and Pixels. Check out Kotaku. Yep. And if you're from I expect Co- you to put like a giant oh, over all that. I do all that stuff. And, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't know. If I- maybe I'll interview Stephen King next. Keep your eyes peeled. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Neighborhood Game Club at E3 2017. Cool, thanks, Frank. Bye! Jerry, what do you think? It was good. It's good. It's good. I want to hear more about GameStop. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The GameStop feud. It's after Rocka Rocka's filming, I don't know, but...